American football in Finland. The voice in your ears and the face on your screen. I'm Perfect Purvis, and this is American Football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Coach Q and Chris Green. What's going on, fellas? What up, what up? <laughs> All right. The AFF Podcast is available everywhere you listen to your podcast, and now you can check us out visually here on the YouTube channel. Wherever you listen or watch, be sure to subscribe, follow, like, all that good stuff. And anyone who listens or watches but doesn't hit the like button, we know you're a hater. That's okay. We're going to move go on with the show. All right, it's first down. We get a chance to, you know, vent a little bit about what's going on in our lives. Uh, what's going on with you, Q? Man, just bought a house, man. Congratulations. House. Yeah, congrats. Last, Pop bottles. Last one was, yeah, I'm a, like, like they say, like Ply say, I just bought another house. The last one was boring. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, man, other than that, man, just, uh, you know, getting ready to do this move, man. But, you know, hey, life is life. Everything is good, man. Chris, what about you, my good man? Well, finally, we got a bit of nice weather here in the UK, so I was able to get out, do a bit of gardening today, did the first first long cut of the season, so that was looking like a jungle out there, so that needed to be done, so it was good to get out there. Yeah, just, just keeping myself to myself, getting close to my season. My season starts, uh, the British American football season starts this weekend, and then we actually got our first game next weekend, so yeah, should be good. All right, all right. I mean, y'all have things going. Um, I'm going to let you know what's going on with me. I have a five-year-old daughter. She needs to grow up faster. I've had enough of it. They don't <laughs> tell you this. I keep thinking, like, okay, she's going to get real big. She's going to start doing stuff. I need her to start, you know, pulling her weight around here. <sighs> she just, I mean, she know how to do stuff, but she don't do stuff because she knows other people will do it for her. Like, she knows how to put on her shoes, but sometimes she don't want to do it. She knows how to get dressed completely, top to bottom, but she wants me to help her get dressed every day. And I'm like, hey, can a can a can a dad get a break out here? Um, <laughs> trying to teach her to ride her bike, and she's doing really good, and she's going super fast on the bike. And obviously, I'm holding the bike for her so she don't fall. And I'm like, you need to slow down. And so she just keep going. So I let it go. And then she, you know, almost falls. She don't actually fall. She mm. stops herself, and then she just starts crying like she was dying. I was like, what happened? She's like, I don't like it no more. I'm like, if you don't get out of here with these tears, there ain't nothing going on. <laughs> I, I know, I know she's, a, she's a, a kid, and, you know, we have to raise her up and all that. But if anybody know me, I'm not really, I don't do sympathy. I don't really have much of that, you know? I've, I've lived my life, and I'm raising her with the same thing. Like, she uh, she needs to get, she needs to start being older and doing more stuff herself. That's all I'm saying. But that's what's going on. Uh, I'm not in the terrible twos no more. I'm in whatever you call it when they're they're five, but I wish they were seven. Does that make sense? Like, <laughs> <laughs> if she was seven or eight, we'd probably be rocking by now. But boy, she's taking her time. She also plays sports with kids that are like six and seven years old. So I always forget sometimes that she's actually younger than a lot of the other kids. You know, they be out there, you know, hooping, tying their shoes, running and doing all this stuff, riding their bike, no training wheels. And I'm like, what you doing? And she's like, I'm only five. Like, just turned five, like a month ago. So, <laughs> and I just, I just tell her, you got to stop acting like you five. Start time to, you know, level up a little bit. We're going to put her into pre <laughs> And uh, sports like a year early, anyway. So nah. she needs to get into it. That's, yeah, but that, that's my rant. That's first down. Let's get into this thing, man. Are you a fan of the American Football in Finland podcast? Show your support and style. Rock our logo proudly on hoodies, t shirts, beanies, and snapbacks, all designed for fans like you. Join us in celebrating American football in Finland. Grab your gear and be a part of the AFF community. Man, I thought that commercial break was going to take longer. <laughs> I'm, I'm eating during, during this show, man. <laughs> Do a little bit of that pizza. And I'm like, oh, man, it's already over. So, 
What we're gonna talk about yeah. today? <laughs> we're gonna talk <laughs> about the talent in the Maple League is loaded every year, and we're gonna get into our MVP candidates for this year. Um, we do this pretty much every year, and just a little disclaimer: our MVP candidates aren't necessarily MVP everybody, but a lot of times it's just guys who have the ability to be either the best offensive, defensive, or special teams player in the league. And before the season, we really just don't know. So we're just putting out some of the best players or some of the players that we expect to have really good seasons. So we'll start first with, you know, the easy one. Christian Paul, running back from Sinayoki Crocodiles. Um, You know what? Chris – you take this one first. Tell us about CP and why you think he might have an MVP season. I mean, the name just speaks for itself in power we trust always. This guy has been a workhorse for the past six years, seven years in the Maple League. And time and time again, he is just performing at such a high level. And he just he seems to not dip in, in standard or performance every year we see him. He just he keeps on performing at a great level. You know, he's putting up yards. He's he's running the ball. He's catching the ball. He's down passing the ball. He does everything for that team. So it he's definitely one of the top early runners for MVP. He's always in the conversation every year. We know he's going to put numbers up. Just give the guy the ball. Make sure he gets his touches this season and he's going to be there or thereabouts for the MVP. I mean in power we trust and he's a baller he's still doing his thing and he will continue to do his thing i mean heck he i feel like he's been here for a minute like in this league it's crazy like, like how long like he's six been years but, i think yeah i think this is six, six. What i mean six seven years yeah so he's been in the league a long time and he still keeps performance after performance he is the stalwart of senayoki crocodiles and yeah i mean he he obviously likes he likes the digs there down there he's he's found a home and, yeah, he just performs and performs and performs. And he's a great asset to that organization and a great asset to the league. And I'm thankful that he, he's still in the league because we're always, we're always going to talk about him. Like, he's, he's one of the top guys and one of the best, I would say, arguably one of the best running backs in Europe. I wouldn't argue with you. That's for damn sure. I wouldn't argue with you about that. I would say I, would say I agree. Uh, what about you, Q? Anything you want to add on about CP before we move on? Man, you know, C C P three. Uh I say C P, not C P three, but uh <laughs> you know, he's he's a class act, man. You know, good dude, um, team player, Crocs guy. He's a face of the Crocs, you know what I mean, for the last few years. And um we'll be fool not to put we'll be fools not to put him up at the top as far as an MVP candidate because we already know exactly what he's gonna give us. Um so I think we're not far off with putting him as a you know, preseason MVP or whatever. Um He's proved it time and time again that he's somebody that you're going to have to deal with uh, sometimes twice a year. Um, but definitely now we, we kind of feel like in the playoffs, you know, he can he can hurt too. He can hurt you. So um, CP definitely probably can can go up there as a number one pick, honestly, um, just off of what he's done in the past and what he's continued to do for this team. So, yeah, just agreeing with what Chris said. The guy got it all. He's doing it all. Um, he's healthy. Um, you know, another year down, but you know, I think he, I think they've got better. I think he's got better, even though we've watched him do you know the most. So, um, yeah, CP definitely supposed to go up there. Yeah, I think um, we've done the all Finland list. No, that's the no the top fifty list. Uh, the first time we did the top fifty list, he was number two, and I think when he was number two in the in the top fifty, he was like offensive player of the year for us. And then yeah. last year, he was number one. I don't know if he was offensive player of the year, but he was – the top 50 list is our list where we kind of go by, like, actual, like, who's the best players. It's not yeah. 100% based on, like, what you did in the season. It's more about, like, the talents and the and what you have skill-wise as a player. And he's easily the, the most talented player in the league. Like, he's the, the best player, not just in his position, but probably on the field at all times – no matter what he's doing. I think uh, one thing that is lost with CP is that a lot of people kind of pigeonhole him as just like a running back. I still think that if they would let this man return some kicks or some punts, <laughs> he put up wild. Yeah, it hurts you there too. Yeah. 
it'd be ridiculous as all purpose numbers. But again, like like you guys said, they keep him healthy, so you know they limit a little bit of what he can do extra. Um, what I'm excited about seeing from CP is he told me in an interview this year that after a touchdown, he is going to do a backflip. Oh, and yeah. I just want to make sure we hold that man to this. All <laughs> hold general. him accountable. I want to see, I see. What what is he, what is CP? He got to be what like he got to be 220? 225, 220. Yeah, 220, 225. 5'11", almost 6 foot, doing a backflip in pads. Yeah. I want to see it. I want to see it. But uh yeah, that's number 1 uh Christian Powell running back from Cineo Crocodiles and we'll go we'll move on to the next guy. Okay, next guy is a youngster, Lucas Edela, wide receiver from the Poor Vu Butchers. Hugh, what do you think about this guy? Why do you think he might have a um, MVP caliber season? Uh, I honestly think it will be hard for him to get it, not because he's not good enough, but just simple fact that I think Brandon Gwinnett would get it before he would, um, mm. being his quarterback. So um, Lucas would have to do more than just be a receiver. Um, you know, he'll have to do punt returns, kickoff returns. Now, if he, he, he throw that in the mix and then he balls out at receiver, then I can see him possibly being, you know, an MVP. But it'll be hard for him to to get it over Brandon Gwinner because the only way that he can get his stats is Brandon give it to him. So um, but he's definitely capable of doing it. I think he's 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 the type of guy who can get 15, 16 touchdowns in a season, uh, maybe even 20 depending on what the DBs look like in the league this year. So um, he, he's definitely that, that young talent that can hurt you. And I think he showed people um, that he can hurt you because uh, I always say, like, you as a football player, if they're not scouting you um, the week before, mm-hmm. then you're not doing enough. You know what I mean? Like, teams should fear you. Teams yep. should look at – they should, like, plan for you. Like, all right, hey, we got to keep a safety over the top. We got to be physical with this guy because he got speed. He can catch a slant. He can catch a hitch. He can go with it. And they got to know that about Lucas. And I think um, in order for him to get to that MVP, uh, you know, caliber type player, um, stat-wise and just uh, uh, the fear factor, you know what I mean? Like, I think uh, – but I think he can do it. He's young. You can tell he's hungry. Um, but, um, yeah, that that's the way that I think he could be up there. I mean, he, he, he has all the intangibles that you want in a young receiver. So, I um, I, I think when we talk about Lucas, Erla um, – Interestingly enough, we don't do this a lot, but I think he's going to win the, like, SAJL type awards. They have an award every year for Offensive Player of the Year who's domestic. And his teammate, Miko Seppinen, wins it almost every year, as he should. But after last season, we saw, especially in the championship, where he had three touchdowns, and then, like, literally a week later, in the national, the U19 national team game, he has another three touchdown performance and takes a kickoff to the house to actually beat the Denmark national team. Now, again, this got nothing to do with Maple League, but you got to be aware of the political atmosphere. And the, the, the rumor and the talk around the league is, you know, Lucas Arela, he runs a four or five. He's the fastest young kid out there. He's the next coming of, I guess, whoever. You want to you want to say he is so he's he's got the juice and I really think that even if he doesn't necessarily put up like MVP numbers or even do MVP greatness I think the SAJL is going to vote him in at that like offensive player of the year that's a domestic I think that that's what he's going to be um, not that he doesn't deserve it I think he he probably will have that type of season but I am hundred percent sure that once you kind of get the nod from the the locals in Finland for those type of awards. Like I've heard nothing but, you know, Lucas Arela, Lucas Arela from people in off season, uh, wait until next year. So I expect him to play at a higher level this year, especially with Christian Naughton and gone. They kind of need someone to, it's going to be interesting to see if he becomes like a, a heavily targeted receiver, like he was the year before when they weren't so successful as a receiving group. 
Um, so he'll have to kind of step into Christian's shoes and be able to do a little bit more from the receiver position, which I saw him do. Again, I don't want to make it sound like I don't think he's going to be capable. I saw him do a lot of great things last year. He got really good towards the end of the season, and he finished it the way that you want to. I think that if he continues that going into this year, we're going to be talking about Lucas Erla every week. Uh, what about you, Chris? Anything you want to throw, throw on to this one? Just so we don't take too long on on him, like you say, you alluded to it. Now uh, Nautilin's gone. I think he's gone to the GFL, right? So he. Uh, no, he's in Sweden. Sweden. Okay. He's so, Carl Staders. Carl Stad, That's it. Yeah. So he's he's gone to Sweden. We'll probably see him back once the Swedish season's over. Oh, production- that's right. I forgot about that. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Pro- but production wise. Seppinen and Nautenin were the two guys who had the most numbers last year. Mm-hmm. So, like you say, Lucas is going to have to step up a bit more and play that Christian Nautenin role until he does return to the team. And I, I think he's he's got the juice. He's a great young kid and he's a great receiver. So, yeah, it'd be exciting to see what he's going to do in that number two role this year, which is what he's going to be in. All right, let's move on to the next guy. All right, next guy on the list. This is our sleeper. And actually, it's not even our sleeper. It's my sleeper. I'm going to say it. Ambro Erhansen, quarterback from the Helsinki Roosters, will have an MVP-type season. I said it, and I meant it. (laughs) Again, it's one of those things that Ambro was a great prospect for the Roosters. And because he was a great prospect for the Roosters, he got the job in Quopio. Went to Quopio. Things didn't work out. He didn't look good. He really just did not look good last year. And I understand that. But he's back in Helsinki now. He's back where he belongs. He's got the support that he needs from this team. And I believe wholeheartedly that the Roosters are going to give him the supported cast that we can see this kid shine. And if he does shine how I expect, we're going to be talking about him as, you know, one of the top players in the league at the end of the season. And I believe it at that. Uh Chris, say something nice before Q tell us what. what <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I gave I gave Amber a lot of heat last year, and, and rightly so. Like he stank it up in Quapio. He he wasn't yep. great. He was missing throws. But like you say, how bad was Miro? We talked about this off air. How bad was Miro when he was at Turku, and then mm-hmm. suddenly he goes back to the Roosters, and he's Miro the hero. Yep. So. There's no reason why someone like Amber, who's been a prospect for the Roosters, gone through that Roosters youth system, now back where he belongs, he's probably going to get shown a little bit more love from the guys. You know, not mm-hmm. being an import, he's back where he was, where he started. So I, I, I think you're right. I think he's going to have a better year. Is he going to be an MVP candidate? Mm, I think it's a bit of a stretch, but I think he's going to do If I say he's an MVP candidate, he's an MVP <laughs> candidate. How about that? How about if I keep talking about him? Week to week, uh, you heard me talking about Christian Nalton in every week last year, and now that kid in Sweden. So I'm just mm-hmm. gonna throw that out there. Herbert's got a little juice out here. And I said <laughs> Ambro gonna be an MVP this year, and Ambro, you better not let me down because I got a reputation <laughs> to hold, and I'm riding with you. After last season, I'm still riding with you out here. But yeah, um, let's 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 get a little bit realistic. You tell us tell us the real deal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys are so positive, man. Y'all are so positive, but uh, you know, I wasn't that positive. Say, I wasn't that positive. You weren't that I just positive. Said he was gonna be better than he was last year. <laughs> you, you, you said that. I, I personally, um, I'm standing on business. I'm, I'm not a fan of. <laughs> I'm not a fan of them moving around quarterbacks, um, mm-hmm. especially homegrown quarterbacks. I'm not a fan of that. Um, like we just mentioned, Miro, um, Miro started having his major success on the latter end of him playing football. Um, but it was years before um, where he played for different teams where we didn't see that Miro. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, make it seem like Ambrose journey is going to be the same as Miro's. Um, but what we do know is Finland doesn't really develop quarterbacks. So uh, they don't develop homegrown quarterbacks to the point of, of, of a starter. Like a mm-hmm. like a young starter, should I say? Um, and that's no knock or whatever, but I just don't. I putting him at, at the MVP rim right now. 
I just I'm just not comfortable doing that because I still think we in the growing we're still watching him grow up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I, I think we're still and we should enjoy that. I think the Roosters should enjoy that. Like they should enjoy watching him grow. Um mm-hmm. but to have expectations that he's going to be this this uh MVP quarterback for the Roosters. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I just, I'm just not cool with that. I think that's unwanted pressure, not from necessarily him or the team or anything. But I'm just, not a, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just not a fan. Like, like I'm, a, and I'm being honest as a coach. I'm just not a fan of having uh, a young finished quarterback as my only quarterback. Mm. Um, you know, the backup is also a finished quarterback. It's also a finished because because you're going to get into that thing of uh, okay, now let's see if the Roosters are going to stay with the growing pains, the same thing that we talked about with Corpio last year, are they going to stay with the growing pains? Are you going to be okay when he, when he, if he throws three or four mm. interceptions in the game, are you going to be okay Ooh. with that? Are you going to be okay going 0 and 4? If it happens, are you okay sticking in there with him? Hey. You know what I mean? And that's it's, something that you got to ask yourself. Like, re- Remember as well, he threw 16 picks last year. 16 Ooh. in 12 games. 16 Stop. picks. Y'all gotta stop bringing out stats, man. I'm, I'm, not, making... I'm, not, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I gotta, you gotta no. throw the good with the bad. Like, I'm not saying he doesn't have a ceiling that's super high because he does, but at the same time, he's such a young player and he's playing mm-hmm. the hardest, almost the hardest position on the field. It doesn't matter what line they put in front of you, that position is still hard. It's still mm-hmm. hard to comprehend, it's still hard to get, it's still hard to have to, if you like, he didn't get the, the uh the you know what coming from high school to college experience and then going to be a quarterback for a men's team he came straight from Finland you know you know played some some ball not saying he played bad ball but like this what we're what they're trying to get him to do is unheard of so it's almost like it's almost like we're gonna hang our hat on him we're gonna put everybody around him to have a chance okay that's cool I'm not saying he doesn't have that but I just wouldn't do it um, I think he still just has growing pains. I think being a quarterback, you have to learn. And the only way that you're going to learn is by mistakes majority of the time watching film. Ambrose, high, I mean, great-looking quarterback, like has everything for it. Um, but I'm just not comfortable putting him up as far as like a MVP-type caliber season just because he's going back to the Roosters. I just don't see it. Um, I think he's a great young player. I think he will be a lot better, I think, in year 10, 12. You know what I'm saying? He's – he's going to be Miro-ish at that point. I'm probably better. You know what I mean? Because he's a lot more talented in certain ways, but I just can't put – I just can't come to be say that I'm okay with him being in that MVP race. I just I just don't see it. And, and a lot of it might be because of what I seen last year. Um, and that that's that might be a slight on him, but I just don't think that – that I mean, we're asking for a lot. Now, if he, if he ends up the MVP, I'll stick my foot in my mouth. And Ambrose, that and makes me a genius. Right. It makes you a yeah, yeah. Right. 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 I'm taking a gamble. But what you're trying to do is you're you're basically sending a message saying this is what we're gonna go with. So through the good or bad, that's all I that's all I care about. Yeah. If you're going, if you're going with him, go with him through the the good and the bad. Means like like I said, if you lose three games, don't don't go to writing uh. Hey, going on Euro players and looking for guys. Players, <laughs> you know, like, because because what you're doing is you're 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 starting you're hurting the team from the jump. You're mm-hmm. already hurting the team from the jump. Every player is going to come into that locker room and see Ambrose, and they're going to have faith in him. But their faith is only going to go as far as he takes them, and that's just mm-hmm. simply that's just how it goes. All right, you know what I'm saying? Because good or bad, I'm just say that. I'm gonna just say that. I I I mean, shout out to Ambrose. Shout, shout out to him having this opportunity to be the starting quarterback for the Roosters. Um, but just take it one 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 game at a time. You know what I mean? I know we put him in the MVP conversation, or Purvis did, but uh, <laughs> I just don't think he should be in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Q. I don't think he should be in it either. I think he's going to be better this year, but I don't think he should be in the MVP conversation. Like you say, this is Purvis, but hey, you know, he's going with his gut, and that's what he believes, and more power to him. <laughs> Pressure bust pipes. <laughs> Pressure make diamonds. <laughs> Let go. All right, we'll go. We'll move on. We'll move on. Next guy we got is the running back from Lawyer Crusaders, uh, incoming guy, I think straight from college, uh, CJ Leggett. 
playing running back. Q, what do you what do you think about this guy and his? Um, I, I believe that they're going to hang their head on him a lot. I think that um, the quarterback they have, he can throw, he can sling the ball, but it's only the running game is going to open that up. And I think um, just from the highlights that I've seen of the guy, uh, just from talking to some of the other players about you know what he can do, um, it's going to be. It's going to be the battle of the running backs this year. Trust me. It's going to be the battle of the running backs. Um, I think his his success goes on how good their offensive line is. Um, but I can see him – I can see him doing what uh, – not doing what uh, – what's his name did last year. But I can see him, you know, 1,500 yards, you know, Definitely. possibly. You know what I mean? I, I definitely can see that. So, if he can get into that range and he's he's something to deal with, you know what I mean, as far as them game planning and stacking the box – then I think uh, he'll definitely be up there because everything that I've heard of him or seen of him has been positive. So we we'll, we just have to see when he you know when he hits the field when he get defended. I'm a I'm gonna jump in on this because I'm gonna be real quick about him. Every running back who has ever played running back in a Rojo offense has had a great season. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's what he will be a running back in Rojo's offense. As much as Rojo runs the air raid, he stretches team vertically. He yeah, also forces. Out. He forces them to have uh, smaller boxes, and he always he's really good at finding good running backs. So yeah. if if Rojo finds a running back, that running back is pretty damn good because he has to make up for the deficiencies in the offense, which is usually the offensive line. And yeah. this season will be no different. The offensive line wasn't great last year. You see what they were able to do with Seth Rowland at running back. CJ will get it. Gonna plug him in. They're gonna say, "Go to work, young man." He's gonna go to work. And he's going to be one of the best players in the league. Chris, what do you got to say about him? Um, just basically echoing what you guys said. I mean, they gave Seth Rowland nearly 200 carries last year. He had 198 carries and 12 rushing touchdowns. So they do lean heavily a lot on their run game. Like you say, Rojo is an air raid guy, but he finds running backs he, and, he, and he uses them to their, their strengths. And I think that's exactly what they'll do. I, I do think that he will be in the MVP kind of conversation at the end of the season as well as now preseason he looks like a solid running back uh played d1 as well i I don't know how much he played at georgia tech uh but yeah he he was he was there and he was at mercer i think was the other university i think that's it yeah he was at at mercer as well yeah so you know he's 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 been at good college level he he's going to be a solid player for them definitely and yeah i think he's going to be one of the ones to watch this season and and like q said i think yeah it's going to be battle of the battle of the backs again hmm it's interesting all right let's move on to the next guy all right next up we have my guy alpha jalo juice Athlete, I put his position as athlete for the Wasser Royals, and I'll start off. And I'm gonna be brief, I promise. Alpha is probably the most physically gifted player in the league, and the Royals allow him to be himself. They allow him to play where he's needed. He plays receiver. He plays running back. He plays cornerback. He plays safety, punt returner, kick returner. And it's not one of those things where you're like forcing him into uncomfortable situations or making him do more than what he what he wants to do. He wants that. He wants to be that type of player. He's trained for it. His workouts are insane. And this is going to be another season for him. He was our um, he had our CSU award last year, our outstanding player award, because all three phases of the ball, he was a first team guy. Like that's who he is. He hasn't changed. All he's been doing is working hard in the offseason, playing in Spain, where he was the MVP in their league. And I expect he's trying to get two MVPs this season, and he just might do it. What about you guys? Uh, Q, you got it. Well, you know, Alpha, man, uh, you know, I, I got much respect for him, just with everything he's done over the years, Sweden and Germany, everywhere he's been, man, he's done nothing but show up. Um, so I don't expect anything different this season. Um, even with Vasa, you know, like you said, they let him be himself. Um, I would just like to see him, you know, I would, I would like to see some games where he didn't have to do everything because I think he'd be a lot more, uh, productive, uh, on certain sides of the ball. I, I do think 
I think he's a better receiver than he is DB, so I would like to see him just be able to play offense. Now, if you want to move him around and running back and all that stuff, that's cool, but I would just rather see Alpha on that side because I think he just can hurt everybody. He can put points on the board if he's not tired from playing defense. But um, like you said, he does it all. He's a juice, man. I mean, <laughs> you don't get a you don't get a nickname like you don't get a nickname like Juice for no reason. You know what I'm saying? So Alpha is, is definitely the guy. Who, everybody knows what they expect from him already. I think um, no matter who you play, like you said, when he comes on the field, he's the most dangerous guy hands down on the field, and um, that hasn't changed yet. It doesn't matter who they bring in. Um, you have to bring Tyree Kill in here for me to for me to take that away from him. You know what I mean? Because Alpha is just one of those people. Like at any given moment, he'll hurt you. Uh, you know what I mean? And and he's definitely definitely he's going to be in the top as always, as long as he stays healthy. Alpha is going to be at the top. So yeah, he rightfully should be in the MVP talk. I mean, for me, if you looked in the dictionary and saw the word electric, Alpha's <laughs> name would be next to it. Like. <laughs> This guy is him. He is electric in the return game, on offense. He's just a machine. There was only one other guy who had more all-purpose yards than him last year, and that was that was Seth Rowan. He had over 2,000 all-purpose yards, like over 1,000 receiving yards. This guy is a machine. He does everything for the organization. I agree with Q. I, I just like to see him primarily on offense and, and in the kick return game as well. Because I feel like you, it's better to keep him healthy that way. But like you say, he's been playing in Spain for the for the Drax. So he's definitely in shape. He's ready to go. And every year he produces year on, year out. They've just got to get him his touches. Every time he's got the ball in his hands, there's an opportunity that he could score. Because I've seen him make six, seven, eight guys miss before. And he is just an absolute generational talent, this guy. Um, and again... Great for the organization of Vasa to keep hold of him. Obviously, they're doing something right up there. Uh, again, he's found a bit of a home up there, same as like CP and Sanayoki. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's always going to be in the conversation. Like you say, CC Award winner la last season, and he's just an absolute machine. He is electric. Yeah, last thing I'm going to say about Alpha also, is I, I, I mean – I think he might be getting that uh, that Keller coming up too. You know, mm. might might be one or two seasons away from being a a Finn on the yeah. field. So that'd be interesting. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm here with Alpha Jallo from the Wassa Royals, defensive back, wide receiver, kick returner, punt returner. Uh, maybe even quarterback sometimes. Probably going to play kicker this year. Who knows? But Alpha, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, definitely won't be playing kicker, but maybe the other <laughs> positions you mentioned. You don't play no kicker. You don't do a little soccer in your free time. You know what? You're actually, in Spain now, so I know you. I know you're playing soccer out there. You know, I ain't gonna lie. I went to this indoor facility, and I was amazed by myself. I did the, you know, when you do the feet pass, boop, 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 and I just. Mm -hmm. Kicked it behind me and it went directly in the goal. And I was like, but a month before that, we did a penalty kick in practice. I missed it. Mm. So I was like, ah. That, no that's always been my issue with like soccer is I, I don't know how to like kick and score, I guess. Like, I don't know how to shoot. I can pass decently. I can get the ball. I can cross it and everything. I can dribble okay. But if I got to shoot, I don't know where the ball going. I play kickball. And kickball ain't the same as soccer, but I understand. <laughs> but it's okay. getting on to the actual interview, we mm -hmm. always digress at the beginning of this these interviews. Uh, we want to talk about the 2024 season. You're playing with the Wasser Royals. First question is, what is your motivation for coming back with the Royals this season? Like, what do you expect? Like, why did you come back to this team, and what do you expect to happen? I know it's kind of like a two-part question. Yeah, it's okay. Why did I come back to this team? I can answer that first. Mm -hmm. As we all know, I've been playing in Raza since the first time in 2019. Took a gap year in 2021. Played in the ELF and came back in uh, 2022. Won a championship there in the lower division, but still a championship. Man, Vaza is home for me. You know, it's where my family is. The players, we look after each other. You know, something about the small towns. When you play in different places in Europe, of course, the capital city is going to have that one team. But the small cities like us, 
Sinyogi has a good vibe. Can't speak so much for Corpio. The vibe there is different, and we feel like them outsiders that got to stick together. Almost like when you a black guy, you know, black people immigrating to another country, you see another black person, we stick together. So we had that vibe within each other on the team. There's some chemistry that's going to be changed up this year. And uh, uh, I mean, that's why I'm here, because Vaza is home for me. Okay. Until, All right. You asked me another question. What was the other question, QB? Well, I guess I guess now the next question, I try to do a double question, but the next question would be what is the reason for like what's the motivation for the Royals yeah. team this year? I mean, okay. like I know now you tell me why you came back, but what's mm -hmm. the motivation for the team going into this season? Like why what's your you know, why? What's your team's why this season? I understand, you know, every year. Every team at the beginning of the season, the goal is championship. But we got to mm -hmm. be real. Every team is going to make it there. And some teams, if they're honest, they know that their their staff, the people that they recruited, is not going to help them out. Um, Seppo is, is a guy who, you know, you can bump heads with him, but you got to trust him at the end of the day. It's like buy in to his program and see what's going to happen for the team if we all buy in. So he feels confident every year with the pieces that we put together and the why, you know, we got to the playoffs last year. We expected to be there, but during the season, even if we're honest, we can look from an accountability perspective that we didn't almost deserve to get there. But then we got the right pieces. We won the right games, got into the playoffs. And we think that the why is that we have a chance this year. We think that some teams have got worse and we think that we got a, a bit better. So, um, the big why is win the championship, of course, every team's motto. But the why for us is that we have business to take care of on the field. We have business uh, to prove to other cities and other teams in Finland that Vazavoro is still a team to reckon with, and we can build off that for the future. So I think like this year is also planting some seeds because we're a young team, and we want to show that our young talent is going to be able to help us out, but also build towards Vazavoro being a dominant club. Okay. Well, speaking of going into the season, uh, last year, like you said, you guys made the playoffs, um, not mm -hmm. as dominant as you wanted to be. What are some changes or improvements that we can expect from the Royals going into this season? Uh, don't want to give too much of our card, but I do think that some aspects of our defense is going to be really strong. Yeah. It's already out there that we've signed um, more defensive players. Uh you know, uh, Europeans, uh, Americans. And, you know, so we can expect that teams not going to be able to uh, run the ball well against us. Um, we expect that our players are going to fly around to the field. Uh, and it's always a good sign when teams can resign certain players. I think it's a bad mm -hmm. sign when teams don't, people don't want to come back. Or it's like, ah, you don't know if you want to come back. If you can't get people to come back, that's a bad sign, you know. Um, so yeah. we have some resigning players, you know, two on the defense. And some of our local players, they decide to come back. They can easily, uh, I won't say easily because it's the same beat, but they can easily go play on other teams, go down and play in Porty or play just the co college league. Uh, but, you know, offensively, you know, our game plan is always still the same. You know, we want to be dominant running the ball. We have a great O-line coach, Seppo, and uh, he's developing the players. So I think I would say those two things defensively, you know, we're going to be strong in some areas. Offensively, you know, we want to take care of their running. Okay. And what about, you know, kind of like a week to week basis? You guys are going to be focusing on certain aspects. Obviously, you have to do game planning, but mm -hmm. I want to know what do you think is going to be what the Royals do every week to make sure that you have a chance for success? And like what is it about your team that you think you're going to always bring to the table each week during the season? The great thing is I keep mentioning Seppo, Marty Cass, the other people in management, but Seppo still on the field at the same time as the management. We're doing it already now. We are we have been bet, been game planning already since the end of last year. Everything is is already prepared, started from last year. We already know everything that's going on. So right now we're doing the small things right is one preparation. That's why even if we don't have the best players on the field, we are prepared. And we have already have our meetings. This past week, they just finished camp. Then we're gonna have another camp. Uh, when I'm back in Finland. So, and we keep that same, same momentum. So the the steps that we're doing right now with having camp and having meetings already, like they had a Zoom meeting every Monday 
I see the messages, you know, uh, on WhatsApp and I see them uh, on my emails and we have the film, you know, we have a great film too. Like some everything me, I'm pretty sure they have film practice, but our film from a drone, you know, is great. It allows us to see all the mistakes and all the, you, you can't lie, you can't BS any of these things, you know? Um, so game plan and we week in to week out. So I set that picture up to say that we, we're going to be very prepared. And I think our coaches, um, even the ones who, uh, you know, knew the coaching, they, they're getting better. And our young guys are getting better. So if anything, what we're going to be doing week to week is, is game planning. You know, I think that our strength this year is that we our young guys are getting smarter and we have veteran players that we can outsmart some teams now. While in the past, um, we had to rely a little bit on key players. I think we can outsmart teams. Okay. All right. So last question, I'm going to let you get out of here, Alpha. Um, this season, 2024, like you you mentioned earlier, uh, some teams are, are not as good as they were last year. Some teams might even be better. Um, that's to be seen. But there's a lot of change throughout the league. A lot of teams are changing certain parts to make teams look completely different. Even you guys having a new quarterback makes your offense look completely different. No matter what you do, that's always a change. And then there's other teams that have new quarterbacks, new defensive players, new coaches all through the league. So for you personally, what are you excited about seeing in the 2024 Maple League season? What excites you this year? I mean, what excites me is competing, to be honest. I love to compete and I love to be a part of um, my team's success. You know, I mean, selfishly speaking, I like to be part of team success. And I'm always also excited to see DJ back on the field. I mean, DJ was a dog on defense, uh, Lawman, um, you know, a new signing guy, Prince. So I'm excited to see that as far as like our team perspective. And sorry that I didn't mention other people that didn't want to go down that list when you got to keep yeah, right. But I'm also excited to see, you know, uh, how we're going to match up, our young guys match up against, you know, the other competitions of, of teams. And uh, I do, I mean, it's, it's, you know, one thing that I want to say, you know, is a bit off top, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see if, if Porvu has his ego, like, we won the championship last year and we're going to dominate again this year. And I told Gwen already, I said, look, ever since I played against the Butchers, I've never lost a game against them. And I don't plan on doing it this year. So I'm excited to see like what dynamics they're going to bring. Yeah, I'm trash talking, you know, Brandon. Hold on, we got to bring that back because I love that. That's yeah. what I wanted to see. So, you know, I wanna, you know make it yeah. clear for everybody. Uh, Undefeated against you got, Butchers. You guys. When I talked to DeMarco earlier, I think he said something uh, similar, but now I'm going to ask you. You guys didn't feel like Porvu were better than you last year, right? Not, never. Not at all. Not not one time. Not one mm -hmm. time, to be honest. Not one okay. time. We so, did see that so, they did get better and they won games that we didn't think they would win, but we mm -hmm. just knew that we can dominate against them. Okay. And going into this season, I mean, almost the same teams, right? So yeah, and they uh, the same outcome. Yeah, and they took one of our players, uh, one of our cornerbacks, uh, Jose. I think you yeah. guys that sign. So yeah. it's like, you know, you know, that's my guy. Regardless, Jose is my guy. But I'm excited to see him on the field. You know, it's like one of those dynamics. Like, ah, uh, we know him. He's he's one mm -hmm. of our own. So we want to attack this guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> and because uh, last year we took one of their players. We took uh, Yede. Uh, I can't okay. pronounce his last name, but Yede, one of their DBs. Uh, but he's going back to Provo again. So. It's like two guys who played with us last year going to play over there, and Gwyneth was over there. So it's going to be a fun dynamic. So I'm mentioning Porvo because we have some common interests. They got some Swedish speaking over there. We have that over here as well. But all the other teams as well, I'm just serious to see how St. Yorkie is going to do because they was the promising team to be in the finals. They went to the finals and lost, and it was in their hometown. And, you know, I, I am excited to see how other teams are going to be this year, the new dynamics, new signings. Uh, yeah. You know, Finland's always doing a good job of bringing some good players over here and the finish league is a great league to be in so i'm excited to see how it's going to be on the field yeah. excited to compete. well it, it should it should work itself all out in september and we'll see who's the best that's for sure, sure. we'll see we'll keep up with you and <laughs> the but uh that's it for me i appreciate you coming on the podcast alpha wish you and the royals good luck this season man and have mm -hmm. a good one we'll be here on the aff podcast and thanks for having me again. Uh, God bless you, Perth. Are you a fan of the American Football in Finland podcast? Show your support and style. Rock our logo proudly on hoodies, t-shirts, beanies, and snapbacks, all designed for fans like you. Join us in celebrating American Football in Finland. 
grab your gear, and be a part of the AFF community. Next guy we got on the list, uh, qu- the new quarterback for Quopio Steelers, Josh Taylor. Uh, I'm, I'll talk about him a little bit. I haven't seen a lot of his like college film, but I do know about him and the receiver, Austin Brock, having a really good connection and him putting up a, good stats in college. I think as long as he comes in and is able to, to throw it as much as Nessie wants him to, he's going to get numbers, and those numbers are going to put him in MVP race. That's all I'm going to say about him. Uh, Chris, what are, you, what are your thoughts on Josh Taylor? I mean, when you can get a quarterback receiver duo that's already made come over here, it speaks volumes. And like you say, they've already got that connection. They've already built it. He's over in Quapio already. He's been training with the team for X amount of time already. He's been to their training camp, so he's in early, which is good. You don't always see that from all the imports. Sometimes they're they're coming sort of, they're sort of arriving sort of now, like April time. But he's been there. He's been with the team, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on in the finish league. But I think he's the kind of player that's going to thrive. You know, we see some quarterbacks that don't do so well in Finland, but I think he's in that category of he's probably going to thrive in. Corpio, there's there's a big there's a lot of pressure on him. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him. But there's they need to bounce back from last season. They had a down year last year. You know, the year before that, talks of them being a dynasty, winning those three championships. But now they've had a down year. How are they going to bounce back from that with this new guy? And I think with Nessie as well at the helm, it's interesting to see how he kind of clicks it all together and whatnot. But yeah, I mean CJ. Uh, CJ? Josh Taylor, sorry. Why am I saying yeah. CJ? Josh Taylor, he's he looks like he's going to be a good fit for that Quapio offense. What about you, Q? Anything you want to add about him? Um, from from everything that I've I've been hearing, I, I've seen some of his film, and um, he's he's actually everything they're talking about. Uh, to even be considered, um, I mean, I mean, I think he won the D two Heisman. Uh, I believe he won the D two Heisman or D three Heisman, one of them. But either way, that's hard to do, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if y'all understand that. Like, I understand. Like, There's a lot yeah, of D like, two teams. It don't matter. And I, I tell people this all the time. It don't matter what level you on when you are up at the top as far as like the Heisman talk, that type of talk in any league. That means you putting in work. So I'm expecting those that same thing for him to come to Finland. I think if the only thing that will change will his mind just has to slow down because it happens. You you used to moving a little faster in college and then you come to Finland and like stuff don't open up or it don't move as fast. But I think being, you know, being there before the season start, he shouldn't really have a major problem with that. He has his number one receiver he had with him in college. You got Austin Brock, good dude, good athlete. Um, he's going to hurt some people in Finland. He's, he's believe me or not, he's going to be a matchup nightmare for a lot of people in Finland. But you, t- you take that, that chemistry that they already have together and you put that in and say, hey, we know no matter what else happens, these two guys mm-hmm. right here are going to produce. You know what I mean? So I think Josh Taylor, I'm, I'm going to call it now, I think he will probably be the number one quarterback in the league this year. Like, hands down, oh. I think he's going to be the number one quarterback in the league. Okay. Hands down. Mm-hmm. That's, a good, that's a good prediction. All right, let's mm-hmm. uh, move on to the next guy. guy we got on the list, DeMarco Artis, defense alignment slash linebacker for the Wasser Royals. Uh, I'll lead this one off again. DeMarco had a great season last year, broke records in, in the Maple League for sacks, coming back this year with a chip on his shoulder. Talked to him earlier in the season and he said he felt slightly disrespected by not being offered what he thought he was worth from, you know, the higher-up league in Europe, the ELF. He's coming back to uh, Wassa with, with revenge on his mind. He's moved to the linebacker position so he can show how versatile he is. I think, I mean, from last year, couldn't nobody stop this man. Not a once. They triple-teamed <laughs> him a lot of times, and he still was able to be successful. I don't know what – I don't think he has anything to prove. But I think that he thinks he has something to prove – and that's dangerous for the Maple League. I yeah. feel sorry for anyone who attempts to block him, for anyone who's running with the ball when he decides to tackle you, because I feel like he's going to have a little bit extra in him, and that's crazy that there can be more than what he did last year. And that's how I feel about DeMarco Artis. So I know if he's playing like a, a man on a mission all year, he's going to be 
one of our top players, either defense or even MVP. I know it's hard for defensive players to get MVP, but he's probably going to be the defensive player of the year. Um, was he our defensive player of the year last year? I think I picked uh, Akeem, but mm. I think we might. I think it was like up in the air between them two, but I think Akeem had a better year overall. Yeah. I think he was he was defensive lineman of the year then, but he, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But again, Akeem had the stats. Uh, I mean, Achilles had those stats. That's what really Akeem. overpowered like Akeem, Achilles. Yeah, yeah, you said Akeem. Achilles really had a lot of stats. But that's why I think about Demarco. What about you guys, Chris? What's your thoughts on Demarco? Uh, yeah, it was um, Achilles Leroy. That's who we gave yeah. defensive player of the year to last year. Just uh, just adding that in there. But yeah, Demarco artist. I mean. He had a standout season last year. And like you say, he's a headache for offensive coordinators because you're going to have to double team him because he is a talent and he is a difficult man to block. So like you say, and there's there's footage of him getting off double teams as well. So they're going to have to scheme around him. They need to run away from him. They can't afford to run into him or have some kind of like pulling scheme where they've got linemen trying to, trying to blindside him if they can. But I mean, he is a headache for offensive coordinators, and he's he's definitely in the conversation. He was in the conversation last year for Defensive Player of the Year. He will be in the conversation again this year, I'm sure. And like you say, he's going to have that chip on his shoulder. He didn't get the contract he wanted in the ELF, so he's come back to Finland, get some, getting some more film on, on, on there. So he's going to want to improve his film so that he can get to that place next year, maybe. So he's like you say, he's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder, and it should be a good year for him. Yeah, we'll move on to the next guy. On the list is Eric Irvin, defensive back from Sinioki Crocodiles. Q, I'll let you lead this one off, man. Why you think of All right, Eric, Eric Irvin, um, if he has a year or he's as active as he was last year um, with a little more help towards the end of the season, I think he kind of uh, – I won't say he did, but the plays that he were making kind of like kind of dusted off as far as – I won't say dusted off, but they kind of laid laid a little low towards the end of the season. Maybe he was getting ready for the, the playoffs or whatever it is. But Eric was very active early on in the midseason for the Crocs. So he has the, the ability to have those type of effects on games, no matter who he plays for. Um, so I expect I expect him to be active. That's what I'll say. I expect him to be active. Uh, his input on the games, um, he'll have to show us those and what that'll be this year. But I think he definitely, uh, if he if he can if he can top what he did last year and add a little more to it, then yeah, he definitely could be in the MVP. You know, talk um, because a lot of his plays have affected a lot of these games, and um, you need those plays sometimes, um, especially for the team that. Uh, well, I mean, he going back, but now. Um, you know he's he's the type of guy that can make it happen, man. So yeah, Eric, is, I think he can he can be in the MVP race. Um, if he start off early and just have those big different plays that he makes and and, and go from there. For me, um, Eric Irvin uh, has a lot of that uh, Richard Sherman um, aspect to him. I feel like I feel sometimes I feel like I don't like the way he, he does his coverage, but he takes risks. And that's what is like high risk, high reward type thing for him. And the thing is, if he was a gambling man, he should be playing in the lotto because his risks pay out way more than they should. So at that point, you have to start thinking, okay, it's not just risk, it's calculated risk. And that's what he does really well is he puts himself in a position to make big plays. He's not overly conservative about, you know, where he is on the field so that he can make sure the quarterback doesn't throw it. He wants the quarterback to throw it because he wants to make that turnover and create the type of value for his team. So I'm really excited to see him this year, and I, I think that's what he's going to do for the Crocodiles is help that defense have those game-changing plays and those momentum turnovers. One thing we know about the Crocodiles is they're a momentum-driven team. Like, the momentum plays heavily in how well they do in games. And we even saw, especially even in the championship, if they don't have the right mojo, then, you know, things go down. And what Eric did last year was a lot of times he kind of helped them get the momentum and swing things for that team and put them in, in better spirits. And I think that's what he's going to do this year. 
And of course, his stats are going to back it up, and that's going to put him up as one of the best players in the league. What about you, Chris? For me, Senioki, first of all, <laughs> make sure you register him properly this year, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the 10 I, seconds that he was a lawyer crusader, like, did yeah, they do paperwork? How'd that did work? they transfer him out and then transfer him? I don't know. But, <laughs> hey, just just, just, just a little side, side kind of joke there. But because we saw last year in that first game of the season, like, he was an, he was an asset to them on special teams as well. He blocked that field goal and, and ran it back. So, he's a great player. He will show up. Is he an MVP candidate? I would say so. Like, he's in that mix. Is he top five? Mm, maybe not. But he is a great player. And he's been around the league for a while now as well. He's been there. He's done that. I think he feels more at home at Senioki. I guess that's why he went back. We don't really, I mean, I don't really know why he's gone back. You might know. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to be in that conversation. He had, I think, four picks last year. Yeah. Yeah, four, four picks early. last year. Yeah, he had him early, yeah. So he did tail off towards the end of the season, but I don't remember him giving up many big plays. Mm -mm. I don't remember him giving up many big plays. So if he's quiet and he's not making tackles, if he's not making tackles, it's probably a good thing because it means that the rest of the defense is doing their job. So And he's doing his job in the coverage. So I think he's definitely in the conversation. He's going to be good. He's, he's, he's been good every season. So, yeah, he's definitely one of the players to watch. All right, we'll move on to the next guy. All right, next up, we got RJ Long, wide receiver from the Loja Crusaders. Q, I'll let you lead this one off, man. Uh, RJ, man, uh, always, always going to be an MVP candidate for me. I think uh, it all depends on uh, the quarterback and the situation. Um, RJ's best seasons were when quarterbacks knew that he was the that he was the option. He was the guaranteed option. Didn't necessarily mean player of the team, but it's just he was the best option to go to. Majority of the times, his hands are a one. The ball in the air. He going to get it. Um, yes, he kind of slowed him down a step, but um, he lost some weight over the offseason. season. And and I think this is a be a strong you know comeback season for him. Um, He's probably one of the most talented veteran receivers, obviously, in the league. Can't hurt you. Still requires a double team. Still requires uh, – let me say that out loud. Still requires a double team. So, um, <laughs> for all the guys – for all the coaches that, you know, sometimes they think they know better, uh, he will hurt you when that ball is in the air or if it's not. You know what I mean? So, RJ definitely uh, – quarterback can get him the ball, then, yeah, we, we talking 16 – Touchdowns, you know what I'm saying? If he plays defense, we're talking another four or five picks probably. So, yeah, yeah. he could definitely be in that mix. Chris, uh, you got thoughts on RJ? RJ is that guy. We we know all about RJ. He's, he's going to have another RJ season. I think he had a slight down year last year in terms of his numbers. He was still mossing dudes when he could. I don't feel like they looked for him enough. Um, it was better when Rally came in. As the quarterback, he's the first quarterback they got a stunk. But he's another guy, again, I don't necessarily want to see him play a defense. I want to mm. see him just focus on offense. Because we talked about it before on one of the other podcasts, and Purvis, you jumped down my neck about it. And I, I, I've, I've reflected on it. I think you're completely right. When he doesn't play defense, he can be that guy on offense. Like, I say he had a down year. He still had 683 receiving yards last year and eight touchdowns. It's not RJ numbers, but it's still a good year for a receiver. The, think about it like this. The <laughs> fact that we that you said RJ numbers. There you go. You know, like exactly. that's how good he is. Yeah. Um, and and I'll, I'll finish it up. He still got it. That's all you really need to know. RJ still got it. And if he got it, he, he going to be one of the best with it. And that's what we're going to see from him this year. So we expect to see. Yeah. We've seen it year after year, down year, up year. The only thing that really determines how good he's going to be is if the quarterback gives him the ball enough. Yeah. I, I Personally, I don't – again, I'm not in charge of no teams. I'm not running nothing. But if I have R.J. Long on my team, he will get 10 targets every game. 
I will make sure that he can <laughs> if he don't catch 10 yeah. balls, he getting 10 targets. I'm I got 10 plays that hey, we're going to number well, whatever number he's wearing. We're going to that guy on this play. And if we don't, okay, let's find a play where it for sure can get to him. Like we know he'll be in the spot. If if the wide receiver needs to be where it's gonna be open, we're expecting that guy, he moving his ass to wide receiver. Like that's what I would do. Like he mm-hmm. it's not like he can't play all the positions. It's not like he can't do whatever you need him to do. Getting him the ball is the simplest thing to do. Get RJ Long the ball, and your team will have success. It's a proven recipe. If I give you the recipe of how to make a cake, and then you go and do your own thing, that's on you. I give you the eggs. I give you the flour. I give you the butter. And then you go and and find some mayonnaise and throw that in there. That's on you. That's all I'm saying is you got RJ Long. (laughs) Give the man the ball. Because he still got it. All right, I'm going too long. Moving on to the next guy. <laughs> All right, this is going to be the last guy we talk about. We're cutting this off at 10 because we do a good job talking. Yeah. Uh, but last guy is going <laughs> to be Zachary Wright, defensive back from Portland Butchers. I'll, I'll start with Zachary Wright. Um, I think did he set a record last year as well uh, for interceptions? Did he set yeah, a record nine, for interceptions? Nine interceptions. Nine interceptions. And crazy thing is, when this dude get interceptions, what do you have? Like three, four pick sixes. Like his interceptions were always very timely. And I said it to him. I think I interviewed him this week. Without him, they don't make it to the to the Maple Bowl. They probably don't beat the Roosters when they came They came back from 17-point deficit because he had two out of the three turnovers in that game that helped them win. And there's a couple of games they might lose without having this guy on the field creating turnovers and helping them on the defensive side. And I think that's the kind of player he is. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the SAJL actually picked him as a league MVP last year. So that's just another credit to him that he's that important to his team as well as the league. And I think this year going into it, we're going to see him have a little less pressure on on not on himself, but on being that guy because they should have. Well, in theory, they brought in some reinforcements on the back end so he could truly play his position instead of coaching and playing his position. We said it last year. There was a few times where you would be watching the game and you could see him like coaching guys up. And that meant he wasn't able to get to his spot sometimes, and that could deter him from being the best version of himself. Even though he still was pretty de- goddamn good, I still think that he could have been even better if he didn't have to, you know, play coach on the field. As this year, I don't expect him to do that because they should have had some reinforcements. They should be able to guard somebody at the cornerback position. But again, we'll see if that happens. But back to my main point, Zachary Wright, he's the one. He'll be one of the best players in the league this year. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on him? He was the biggest highlight of the secondary in the Butchers last year. His The thing that impresses me most about him is just his range, his ability to not only read the play, but then go and get the ball. Like His range is just insane and his speed to the ball. And then once he's got the ball in his hands, what he does, he's got return light mentality. When he gets the ball in his hands, it's almost like he's a kick returner. Like he's so good at making guys miss and he wants to find the end zone. And he is just, he's an absolute athlete and he's always going to be in the conversation. I think we rated him in the top 10 of our top 50 players. I think he was number nine, number nine. Yeah. Number nine. So he was number nine on our list of our top 50. So it just tells you what caliber player he is in the fact that out of the Maple League, the whole players, we rated him the ninth best player out of everyone. It just speaks volumes for itself. And he is, He's a nice guy as well, real humble. I remember when we interviewed him last year before the Maple Bowl, and yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. I'm sure he's an absolute great team guy as well. Like you say, coaching the guys up on the field, coaching them up in practice, and he's he's a talent, and I can't wait to see him on the field again. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad the Butchers have, have made it happen and got him back because he's, he's definitely a star on the team. What about you, Q? I'm going to say it like this. Uh, I know the people in the country who Say they don't give a piss about nothing but Zach Wright. Uh, <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm 
without him last year, Porvo is just a good, exciting team. Zach Wright submitted more than I can I could ever imagine, bro. He was everywhere. His energy, the coaching ability, the on field presence, that in your import. If you if if you if they got a definition of a defensive import, he is there. He is right mm-hmm. there. These are the impacts want you to have on these games. You know what I mean? This he's he's embraced the fact that my team needs certain plays from me. So them. I don't know how I'm going to. Some of them are gonna gamble, some is gonna be this way, but he still makes it happen. And I think he's he's even though he came up this, I still think he's up there top five, six players in the league um, because of just his ability to make big plays happen. Shot, um, I think coming into this year, um, if he has another repeat year or similar year, then they got to think about him, you know, as far as MVP. It's going to be hard to beat some offensive guys, but, but the things that he could do on defense is crazy. Um, he had an interception record, like we said. Um, I'm just, I just want to see how this. He's a, he's exciting to watch. Yeah, I think I think the only thing he can maybe improve upon is I don't know how he can get nine more interceptions, but he, I mean, he was taking them. It wasn't like they were just throwing them to him. He was going to taking a lot of those. Yeah, I, mean, I guess he could have more tackles this year. I mean, he does like you know six or seven interceptions, and has more tackles than he had last year. It's an improvement, but that's the only thing he can improve on. I don't think he can do 10 in a second. Nobody's going to just throw him the ball yeah. that many times. Like, eventually, they're going to start running the ball. But uh, that's yeah. the last guy we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to interview Zach here in a second, and then we'll come back with last words. All right, I'm here with Zachary Wright from the Poor Blue Butchers, defensive back. Zach, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. It's great. It's great to have you on. We're going to jump right into the interview. First things first, you came back to the Butchers. Why? Why'd you come <laughs> back? What's on your mind? What's the motivation for coming back to Port Vue once again? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, this this team and organization, you know, the people here were just, you know, too awesome, too nice not to, you know, stick around. It just always felt like home. Just was something, uh, uh, an organization I've never really experienced while being over here. I know I haven't experienced, you know, very many, but they definitely get you right over here. And, you know, maybe winning the championship might have helped a, a little bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we kind of, all the guys were just talking throughout the off season. the first few months. We're like, I think we just came to a conclusion. You're like, why not? <laughs> Let's just do it again. You know, we, we just all enjoyed each other's company. You know, he just had a great time. And that was, we just that's what was always interesting about this for me. Because I was like, like, even like last year, when you guys won the championship, I was like, oh man, this is a perfect way for a lot of these guys to just ride off into the sunset. And yeah. then you all came back. I was like, what? I was like, huh? No, yeah, you actually be surprised. That a, yeah, that was a lot of people's react, uh, same mentality right after this season. You're like, wow, this is a great way to retire. I mean, even a couple of old heads and guys still did retire or, you know, maybe play a couple games this next season, depending on how it goes. But for the most part, we all were like riding off into the sunset. And then we're like somewhere in December or late November, we're like, eh, maybe, you know, what? maybe we should try this again. Yeah, bring it <laughs> and, back. Bring it back. Yeah. And it started That's with awesome. just literally one person. And the next thing you know, it happened, kept just – Snowball. Yeah, you have just the snowball effect. You have just everybody's like, okay, he came back, I'll come back, you know. And it's still, still, we're still trying to get those other guys that retired to, you know, kind of come out of retirement. Just, you know, one more year. <laughs> yeah, just, one more. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Exactly. We're already finished on a back to back. Yeah, we're already all here, you know. Nothing sounds better than back to back. So. <laughs> It's like it reminds me of those like uh videos online you see where someone's like they have a spotter and they're doing a rep and he's like, Okay, one more and you do one <laughs> more and they're like, One more yeah. like, okay, well, come on, one more. <laughs> Next thing you know, you've done like five yeah. more. <laughs> keep going one more, you know, one more. 
Uh, one more. <laughs> one more will get you there because that's that whole, that whole Tom Brady mentality. Like, you yeah, know, very true. One more. Or, you know, what's the best one is the next one, right? <laughs> Obviously. So, uh, mm-hmm. getting into the team this season a little bit, you guys are bringing back a lot of the same same personnel, but also, you know, got a couple changes. What kind of improvement or major changes can we expect from you guys this year? What is something that you think that we'll notice uh, on the field or on the team this year? Um, I would say probably our drive. I feel like especially, you know, being here in practicing already is completely different from where it was a year ago at this time, you know, from having – a struggle of getting enough people to play for have both sides to do 11 on 11 even to not having like, you know, people that can, we just constantly throwing in people that having more reps, you know, more and more. So that's, that's super nice thing to see, which I, which I've heard it comes with winning a championship. That's what happens when you win. (laughs) People (laughs) do want to play when you win. (laughs) I I guess winning makes everything easier for sure. (laughs) Uh, well, and uh, outside of that, but yeah, we just there's I feel like there's a little bit different of a you know a, a emotion that we have through here where it's you know th- last year like you guys been talking about it's last year we were kind of flying under the radar you know not everybody was really like giving us our best for so to say you know like if you were the number one team all season you're always just going to keep getting that and getting that. So there's definitely going to be a different uh, preparation for that than it was last year when we were just sneaking up on people, you know, being the underdog every single game. Yeah, um, that reminds me. I'm going to ask you specifically because, I mean, I've been saying it for record last year as well. The defense was the issue for me last year. The defense was the issue. And you know me, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you weren't on the defense, that team would have been horrible, in my opinion. And not to give you too much credit, I mean, you deserve it, obviously, you're a great player. But a lot of what you guys did defensively, um, statistically, it wasn't great. You gave up a lot of yards, a lot of points at times. But where you came in a lot of times that I think really helped you guys is and now in the championship, that's a whole nother thing. Y'all played great. That's the best defensive game I've ever seen y'all play. But throughout the season, a lot of times you guys were able to come away with wins because of turnovers, like strategic turnovers, like at the right time turnovers, <laughs> aka pick sixes for you a lot of times. Like that's mm-hmm. not that's not really a recipe for success, but it yeah. worked out last year. So my real question is like going into this year. What do you think you guys are going to do to kind of be a little bit more consistent and bring back that that championship defense? Because the way you guys played in championship lights out best defense I've ever seen from you guys last year. And that defense, that's championship caliber. But what do you think you guys are going to do to, you know, bring that into regular season mode? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, a lot of it had to do with throughout the season, especially, you know, being the team we were the year before. It was just tough getting people to show up every week, mm-hmm. you know. Even at a lot of games, we wouldn't have our complete eleven starters every every game, and so that that was definitely a hard adjustment for a lot of it. But and at the same time, I think we kind of just figured something out right at the right time, mm-hmm. and which is you know sometimes all it comes down to is coming together at the right time, having or playing your best at the right time, aka NC State. For if anybody knows for basketball, yeah, they're, um, yeah, yeah, they're one literally one made free throw away from not making it, even being like even getting into the championship in the AC in their conference. But they won like 10 games in 12 days or something and just kicked in at the right time. So they're they ended up being a really good team finishing in the final four. And we and we kind of came out a different attitude after that last our last regular season game, you know, we're like, okay, we're here, but now we need to get to another level on top of that. Because, you know, winning these games by one, two points at the last second isn't going to be enough in the playoffs. And so we just, I think we worked a little extra harder. We worked, uh, you did a little extra stuff throughout the weeks. And I think we're going to, by bringing that into this season, you know, carrying it on, 
is what probably is going to help us, you know, not, and we kind of had like a little, what I've been here, because I haven't only been here for, you know, a little bit, but hearing all the adjustments we've made, we're making more, a little more strict policies within the team, you know, holding more people accountable type stuff. So, and that right there just is showing change of how much this is meaning to us already and just the little stuff like that. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, mm -hmm. Accountability. That's the, the earmark of a champion. Like if you're accountable, that's usually how you build championship cult culture. And that's what it seems like you guys are doing is building that championship culture in Porvo, which let's be honest, it's been missing for a while. Yeah, and, I say, and I, I say that for anybody from Port Vu to actually, you know, take that seriously. The that confidence of, hey, we want to do things and set a standard. Bringing that back to Port Vu, that's a big thing for the Maple League. Which actually brings me to my last question. Like I said, it was going to be quick, Zach. I'll get you out of yeah. here. My last question for you is, um, if you've been keeping up with the Maple League, I hope you have, since you'll be playing in it. Uh, <laughs> a lot of change across the league. A lot of different, you know. Coaching changes, personnel changes, even you guys have a couple of changes. So it's been said, and I believe it wholeheartedly, even though I've already picked the Butchers as my number one pick. Like, there's no going back from that. But <laughs> it's it's anybody's game this year, like more than it was last year. Like, mm -hmm. there's no clear, like, oh, this team is going to be the front runner. I mean, and just to throw this out there at you, because this literally just happened. I've talked to a couple, you know, Royals players, and they feel like even though y'all are the champions, y'all never beat them. So they, they they're like, <laughs> they're like we're not afraid of them. Like we feel like we got a, a good chance of winning the whole thing because that's the team that won last year. We just gotta, you know, play them more often. So again, all this is going on. Like there's just craziness. Like even the Wolverines think they have a chance to win it. Like, and they're not wrong. So mm. for you, what is like the most exciting thing about this season coming up in the Maple League? Like what what is really getting your eye about this season? Well, from what I've gathered is this is uh, a year that's like nothing. No other year has been in Finland. You know, you add an extra import slot, so you get already making the whole league better just by adding one more. American per per team and up to two more if you get uh, you know if you get an offensive lineman so mm -hmm. the league is definitely going to be way more challenging this year even with a whole bunch of changes just with you know the new rules implemented so I'm, I'm looking real forward to that because I think Finland is kind of like not a, on the high radar as it should be within Europe football but I mean, they play second in all of Europe in the football games and the nationals. So I think that has something to show for it. And, you know, we're getting the same rules now that the GFL has with four imports, two on each side type thing. So I think the this league definitely – I'll throw this out there just, just to throw this in there. I put the top three Maple League teams against the top three GFL teams any day. I'm just putting it out there. Like, it's – it's a crazy thing that they don't play against each other more, yeah. but a lot of players, and I'm sorry to cut in your point, but I got to throw out this when I can. I've had yeah. a lot of players come to me and ask me, you know, do I go to GFL or do I go to Maple League? And they're on par with each other. And mm -hmm. I think outside of like players, a lot of people don't know that or think that mm -hmm. a lot of people that haven't played in one or the other, or actually a lot of people who haven't played in Finland, don't understand how good the competition is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not, and I played at GFL one my very first year here, and that was just at the start of the ELF. But ELF is kind of taking all that talent out there. I get from a Finnish standpoint, like they want to get out and go to GFL to, so they can be or the ELF to be considered pro or get that pro mm -hmm. status. Whereas if they're playing home, they're just you know just kind of playing in a league not quite pro for them. Yeah. So I understand that point of view, but. Yeah, I definitely think the, fin the Finnish League, the Maple League this year is going to be at an all-time, all-high level. And I, I was thinking that too. Like, I, whoever wins it this year definitely needs to go play somewhere, the same team, just go play abroad, some other team. Just, you know, just, if, just to put the team, the country on the map, it definitely deserves – they definitely deserve deserve it by for, for sure. But, yeah. I, I hate that the last time – that we played internationally, like a uh, Maple League team. Quopio went to Sweden and they lost. And then 
the Roosters hosted Swabers Hall and they lost. And just, the thing is, Swabers, the year that the Roosters lost to Swabers Hall, that Roosters team was not a normal Roosters team. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people just didn't understand that until they saw that game. But outside of like, you know, people that are in the know, just looks like, oh, well, they, they couldn't compete with the GFL level team. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the GFL, not the best team in the GFL against the Roosters the year after they're the best version of themselves. Yeah, I think it needs to be like the same set team, the same Americans, the same amount, no, nothing more, like nothing less than that, of course, because at the end of the day, uh, your American imports are the ones who, you know, could really change the day of the game. And if your best player is the uh, – your best option is a quarterback wide receiver set and one of them is not there, that completely changes the the whole aspect or a new new import from – that's not – maybe not as good as the last year's import was. You I know. say I say we go no holds bar, throw them rules out the window, come with your league team and our league team, and we just play a game. I'm all there. about the pride. I don't care about the whole – Playing in the CFL, playing in mm-hmm. IFAF. No, nah, screw that. I want to see best football. And I think that's one thing that we miss. Um, I don't know if you're old enough to remember it, but there used to be this thing called the Euro Bowl. Bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back. I yeah. loved it. Uh, yeah. I'm wholeheartedly, whatever a Finnish uh, town or team decides to like start a ELF team first or, you know, a, a European league team, I think it will do good as like, I know it comes with expenses and who can afford what, but I think there's enough talent in Finland to, you know, definitely make their mark on this league or in Europe for sure. I think it'll be, and then they'll get, they'll most likely get all their, you know, Finnish stars that are out in the ELFs and GFL and they'll come back and play for their team. So I think they'll definitely be able to do good enough. Whoever does it first, whenever it happens, but yeah. And I'm hoping that all the teams that – because there's definitely been some great talent that's been recruited to these teams this season, I've been noticing. And I'm just hoping, you know, everybody actually comes in and follows through because I have seen a couple or heard a couple players that left this league. And I don't know what else – where they went to, but I definitely think they're going to be missing out this season yeah. for sure. They're definitely yeah. underrating this league. Yeah, it's and definitely I've, underrated. And I've played in both, too. And I played in the GFL right when the ELF was kicking off. So not everybody was, you know, in the ELF yet. And so there's still a bunch of talent in the GFL. And they're they're very similar in play style and physicality. And GFL might just have a little more money, nicer equipment, nicer fields. But at the end of the day, it's the players, not the, not the stuff you get, you know. Yeah. That's for sure. Germany's just a bigger country. That's that's all. If it was a little yeah. bit smaller, it'd be more, you know, comparable. But mm-hmm. Zach, again, I appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. Good luck to you and the butchers this season. And we'll be watching you here on the AFF podcast. Thank you. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Look forward to the season. Gonna have a blast. Calling all you football players. Are you ready to shine this midsummer? Join us at the AFF Nordic Challenge, June 18th through 21st in Helsinki. Showcase your skills to USA college coaches, train with some of the top coaches in Europe, and compete in one-on-ones. Get insider tips at exclusive recruiting sessions and seize international opportunities. You can even win big with camp-sponsored prizes. Space is limited, so register now. All right, that's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Any last words before we get out of here, fellas? The countdown is really on now for the season. Let's get it on. I feel like we've been doing this preseason stuff for a long time now. Let's get it on. It's time to go. Episode like eight. Oh, gosh. It is a lot. Yeah, it's long drink time now. It's long drink Saturday. Long Carol. That's all I've been waiting on, baby. That's all I've been waiting on. You know, we got, what, about another four or five weeks, I guess, you know, until they kick off. So, uh you know, good luck talking, but we watching. You know what I'm saying? Like Purvis always say, we're not experts, baby. You know what I'm saying? Our word ain't bond, but, you know, we like to give our opinion. Until somebody else come on here, until somebody else come on here in their spare time and talk about y'all, we're going to live off <laughs> our words right now. So, 
you know, shout out to all the season, man. We just want to see some good football. Yeah, um, I'm also super excited about the season. I get, I agree with you, Chris. I feel like we've been doing these shows, boy. People don't even know we've been putting in a lot of work preseason this year, a lot of work. Uh, but get ready for the season. And from this episode, next episode is actually going to be our predictions. So that's going to be exciting. So <laughs> stay tuned in because you know how we do when we do our predictions. It's going to be it's going to be a barn burner, a barn burner. But uh, we want to wish everybody in the league good luck this season. Uh, we'll be right here watching on the AFF podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, share on all the social media channels. So until next time, never forget. T. I. F. We gone. We gone. And we gone. <laughs>